What you are seeing is the most compelling footage ever shot of a creature purported to be Bigfoot. Shot by a self-described Bigfoot tracker, Roger Patterson, in 1967. These 39 seconds of film have convinced many people that such a species exists. Repeated showings over three decades have ingrained these images into the public consciousness. Even commercials have been made about it as companies try to cash in on this apparently real image of a monster roaming throughout the Pacific Northwest. But is it real or one of the greatest hoaxes ever found? There's no doubt in my mind that the Patterson film is a hoax. It is a human being in a fursuit. Cal Korf, an investigative journalist, has been researching the Patterson film for over 25 years. Look at this frame here. You can actually see a line going down here, which looks like either a zipper or, or again, a suspicious fur line. You can see on the body various patches of fur that are consistent with the suit. And there's no primate on the earth that has a fur line going down its spine. It doesn't fit. Though debates about the film's authenticity have raged for years, its origins date to October 20th, 1967, when Patterson allegedly crossed paths with the mysterious being. As it, uh, as I walked across his sand before, I was able to get uh, uh, some fairly good footage of it. It turned uh, a couple of times and looked at us, and as it, uh, as it turned, uh, uh, it seemed to give me the impression that it didn't want uh, anything to do with us. It didn't run, it didn't uh, act scared, but yet it acted leery of us. While a clever hoax was immediately suspected, it is only recently that startling secrets about Patterson's film have been revealed. This Bigfoot film has been shown all over the world. Uh, it rather galls me because of the simple fact that it is one of the worst frauds ever perpetrated against the American public. Rancher and businessman Clyde Rinke makes this accusation after living with these secrets for almost 30 years. He has inside knowledge of the Bigfoot film hoax. In the early 70s, Rinke worked for American National Enterprises, or a and &E, a film distribution company in Salt Lake City. He claims that Roger Patterson also worked for the company. He was on the payroll uh, as a permanent employee, uh, salaried as a photographer. Ranky also says Patterson was told to deliberately fake the Bigfoot filming. They kept it real secret that they were doing this. According to Ranky, any executives recognized the marketing potential of the Bigfoot film. It was part of an ambitious promotional strategy to generate interest in a &E's other wildlife features. They would put the Bigfoot film together with another film such as Cougar Country and the Bigfoot film itself would increase the attendance just tremendously. Renke explains that the Bigfoot in the Patterson film is nothing more than a large man in a monkey suit. He even identifies the man in the suit as Jerry Romney, a close friend of Annie's former chairman. He's almost seven foot tall. He's a big man. He must weigh at least 250 pounds. To check out Renke's allegations, we visited with Jerry Romney at his home in Salt Lake City. He completely denied being the man in the Bigfoot suit. I didn't have anything to do with it, and I don't know anything about it, and I don't believe in it. Well, the only way that I know definitely it was Jerry Romney in the suit is because Jerry Romney told me so. He admitted it several different times to me and just said he had a lot of fun by doing it, except it was awful damn hot in there. Interestingly, Romney starred in a subsequent A&E film in 1972. He now wonders if this fact, coupled with his large physique, might have made Renke point to him. I guess maybe just because I'm pretty big and close to A&E and I'd made this other movie with them, you know, and I knew all the executives very well. He just decided that was a good story. But that's not true. We filmed Romney walking up the street and compared his gait to the creature in the Patterson film. The stride and the long arms are clearly quite similar. Though this is by no means conclusive proof of Romney's involvement, one thing is certain. By repackaging the footage in various ways, a and &E continued to cash in on their sensational Bigfoot film throughout the 70s. It made them millions. Additional support for Renke's story was uncovered in a letter from Harry Campbell, a filmmaker in British Columbia. He claims that in 1967, Patterson boasted about shooting the hoax 
The letter details the gorilla costume, the thick footprints, and the shaky camera. Unfortunately, we can't question Patterson himself. He passed away in 1972. But based on these revelations, along with Cal Corp's extensive analysis, there appears to be only one conclusion. This foot, as we see it here, could not have made the prints that were told were recovered at the site. It is not possible they don't match. The case for the Patterson film, if it were tried in a court of law by science, would be tossed out in five minutes for lack of evidence. It is a hoax. And it seems to have inspired a cottage industry of alleged Bigfoot evidence caught on tape. February 4th, 1992. This video was received in the mail by a Bigfoot researcher in Michigan with no letter of explanation. It was passed on to Bigfoot expert Larry Lund, who began an investigation. Now, we don't know exactly where this film was shot because there was no return address, no name or anything. The fact that the man didn't even want to tell us his name makes us think right away that this is more than likely a hoax. Now, here he looks to us like a man. This looks like a man's gait and a man's walk. The creature in the video walks back and forth among the trees, acting elusive. He seems to hide as the cameraman tries to get a clear shot. But incredibly, this supposed Bigfoot stays in the area instead of fleeing to safer ground. Why would a creature hang around like that if not for a better camera view? Uh, we think a wild creature would take off through the woods and would disappear. Enlargement of the creature suggests a man wearing a standard ape suit. And together with the bizarre pacing, most experts have deemed this case a hoax, plain and simple. Yeah, yeah. 